Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Two Friends in a Bible. I'm Flora, and this is Barbie. Um, we're so happy that you stopped by to spend some time with us when we know, especially here in the holidays, you probably have other places to be. Um, if you've not hit that subscribe button, please do so, um, and the like button. Uh, today, we're going to uh, begin to study the book of James, and this will probably be a several part study to keep these videos a little bit shorter. Uh, so we hope you enjoy it. James is a book that helps Christians live in times of difficulty. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so let's talk a little bit about who James was. James was the oldest half brother of Jesus. And you find that in Matthew 13, 55. He witnessed Jesus' appearance following his resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 7. Okay, and guys, really quick, you might want to grab pen and paper because we are going to be going over a lot of scripture. Uh, just, you know, Matthew 13, 55 and 1 Corinthians 15, 7 are the first that we've stated. And he was among the ones that assembled together following Jesus' ascension to await the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that's in Acts 1, 14. James later became the leader in Jerusalem. And you can find that in Acts 12, 17, Galatians 1, verses 18 and 19. And then Paul even took his advice on how to deal with the new Gentile co converts. That's in Acts 21, verses 18 through 26. James focused on witnessing to his Jewish brethren about Jesus Christ. The book of James was written in Greek around AD 62 prior to his martyrdom. martyrdom. I always have trouble saying that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> James is a fairly simple book and its focus is on the aspects of the Christian life with the major theme being to appeal to the believer that true faith results in outward acts of obedience and rights. And Barbara, I'm excited for us to get going into this. Can you pick up and tell us a little bit more about him? Yes, if my throat would stop being dry, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're fine. Hmm. Only happens when you're getting ready to get on here. <laughs> yeah, I actually really enjoy studying this. Um, so the author of this letter could not have been the Apostle James, who actually died too early, and that was in AD 44, to have written it. The mm -hmm. other two men named James had neither the statue nor the influence that the writer of this letter had. So, you know, there were several James in the Bible, but it had to be this one because the <clears throat> other ones just didn't qualify. Um, mm -hmm. and so James was one of the several brothers of Jesus Christ, probably the oldest brother since he heads the list in Matthew 13, 55. Of course, that's after Jesus because Jesus is the mm -hmm. actual. Um, Jesus' sisters are also mentioned in this verse as well, but not by name. At first, he did not believe in Jesus and even challenged him and misunderstood his mission, John 7, 2 through 5. Later, he became very prominent in the church, and it's believed that James wrote primarily to the Jewish Christians. Mm -hmm. And the favorite verse of James, um, the favorite verses of James are James 1, 9. The believer who is poor still has reasons to boast, for he has been placed on high. But those who are rich should boast in how God has brought them low and humbled them for all their earthly glory with, will one day fade away like a wildfire in the meadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so. A verse. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, that was James 1.9. And then James 1.19. My dearest brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak. And be slow to become angry, for human anger is never a legitimate tool to promote God's primary righteous purpose. I have mm -hmm. a really hard time. You know, I'm getting better the more we've been doing these videos and stuff, because you do have to have a thick bone, a thick backbone, you know, to, mm -hmm. to do these videos, because sometimes people will come after us. I mean, I think we've been called Jezebels um, because we wore makeup. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's like, well, I don't want to scare you, so I'm going to wear it. Um, but anyway, so, you know, you're, you're going to get it. And so we had to have a thick backbone to do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was tough. But um, the patience and all of that, yeah. I mean, this has been a really, this is a good book. Go ahead, Flora. I'm sorry. Start, okay. start with James 1-1. One, one. 
All righty. Uh, James 1, 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting. The recipients are identified only in chapter 1, 1. The 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Many believe that this expression refers to Christians. However, the term 12 tribes would seem a better explanation is that it applies to the Jewish Christians. Furthermore, a Jewish audience would be more in keeping with the obviously Jewish nature of the letter. And then starting in James 1-2 and going into James, I'm sorry, and going to James 1-18, James focuses on the prayer of faith as well as trials and temptations. Let's read that in sections for better understanding with verses 2 and 4. So verse 2 states, My brethren, count it all joy when you fail into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I love that verse. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about that. We are living in an unprecedented time, and now more than ever, we must strive to think rightly about God and his dealing with us. Regardless of what we face, we can be confident in what God has promised and that he remains the giver of good gifts. We can also be sure that any temptation to sin is not from him, but from our own hearts. Thankfully, we know that in Christ, we can have victory over the sinful desires of our hearts. Yeah. And Barbie, you want to start with, um, go next into yeah. verses 5 to 8? Yeah. Um, I like the part in verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Mm -hmm. um, because I know my faith has been tested a lot. And, um, and you know, it's interesting because, like, I used to just get so anxiety high every time I had, like, a PET scan or something for the cancer. And, mm -hmm. you know, waiting on the results, waiting on the results. Well, I notice now that when I go in, I'm just like, yeah, I get it whenever. I don't care. I'm whenever. I ain't worried about it. You know, and it's patience. It's because it is. my faith has given me patience mm -hmm. on that. And I didn't even realize that until we just real that we just read that because I had just mentioned that my patience isn't always good. But yeah, I yep. Yeah. All right. So let's go over verses five through eight. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all li liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all ways. Yeah, if, you like, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We always, you know, if... When we teach something, we always give the scriptural references because we want you to go and check it yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you ask God, he's going to give you wisdom. So mm -hmm. before we read we need or study, we need to ask for that, for that wisdom, and God will give it to us so that we can understand it even better. And I know when I do that, and sometimes I'm bad to forget, but I do try to always pray and ask that. And he does. He will open your eyes and you'll see things that you never saw when you've read it before. Mm -hmm. It does help. You know, you always put God first in it when you're studying and the spirit will lead you and he'll direct you into other parts of the Bible as well. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're all over a cross mm -hmm. reference. And OK, so we'll, <laughs> let's continue on with five through eight. Um, so the need for wisdom. In times of difficulty, we become acutely aware of our need for wisdom. It is easy to feel lost or unprepared. Mm -hmm. The source of wisdom. God does not leave us alone to find our way through our trials. He generously and graciously gives wisdom to those who ask in faith. Mm -hmm. Asking in faith. God is ready and willing to give wisdom. But there is a qualifier. We must ask, believing that he will give it. You know, you can't say, you know, I really need some wisdom on understanding this. You know, if, if it's your will and you, you know, you feel like doing it, you know, thanks. I appreciate, you know, if, if not, whatever, you know, but no, you, you've got to believe that that's what God said. He'll do it. He's going to do it. He will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if he says, 
ask for wisdom and I'll give it to you. Well, that's what he's going to do. They're, you know, God don't lie. So, but I see so many people, you know, who, mm -hmm. who get like that. And, you know, like, you know, going back to sickness, for instance, you know, I, um, you know, I teach people, you know, you need to have faith that God can heal that body. Yep. Well, if it's God's will, no, you need to have faith that God will heal your body. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave Hezekiah an extra 15 years, you know, when he asked, for, you know, so don't, don't think it's, you know, if God says he's going to do something, he will do it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that, that someone will say, if I say that to them, they'll say, um, well, I don't know, my skin said this. And of course, I'm using that because it's what I deal with. But, you know, um, I don't know, my skin, you know, my skin does said this, you know, and, and so if it says, you know, I've got a five centimeter tumor here or there or whatever, then I have to have it. No, you don't. Rebuke it. That's not your, yeah, yeah you don't have to have that tumor. What word the in Bible the Bible does it tell you you have to have it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the Bible and, finally tells us by his stripes we are healed and you got to have faith in that. Mm -hmm. He tells us we we are we can have the healing. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the faith. Right. And so when when I'm teaching people that every time they give me all the negative and all the derogatory Satan words, because that's what it's from. Satan. Mm -hmm. He wants you to believe that. Um, I always tell them, as soon as you think that thought, you need to say, In Jesus' name, I am healed. In Jesus' name, I am healed. And get those thoughts out of your mind. You know, because yep. that's Satan putting them in. So anyway, I went on my tangent. Um, we must trust that he will hear and answer our request. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the person who doubts is described as a double-minded and will not receive. Yep. There you go. If you doubt, you ain't going to get it. Let mm -hmm. the, let, okay, verse nine. Um, this is actually um, your part, Flora. I apologize. I accidentally... Um, didn't tell oh, okay. you on verse nine through 11. Okay. So let's read verse nine um, through 11. It says, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a fl flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flowers fall and its beautiful appearances perish. So the rich man will... I'm sorry, the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. All right, so let's review those verses. James is writing to real people in a real situation. These are people who are facing real trials, and he is a good pastor. As a good pastor, he wants to help his readers apply what he has taught. He applies the truth of enduring with joy and godly wisdom to two different situations. The situation of a poor man and a rich man. Both the poor and the rich are called to see themselves rightly in respect to God and others. And a good example of that, Barbie, we recently did, you know, the video on rich man, poor man. Sometimes when people have a lot of worldly possessions and everything in their life is going right, they think they're blessed, but they don't have that relationship with God. They're thinking they're blessed because of the material. Yeah. And I think I, that's another good example of that. I heard someone once say, have you seen, have you ever seen someone who has passed away drive up to their, um, their, their funeral with a U-Haul? Yeah. And you all can't their... take those possessions with you. They, mm -hmm. they don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. honestly, they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. All right. So verses 9 through 11 are written in the context of responding to trials. James' application to these specific situation not only shows his pastoral sensibilities, but it also reminds us that each of us must apply these unchanging truths of purpose and wisdom and trials to our varied situations. And you then, know, I'm sorry, I'm on a okay. roll. Um, it's so cool listening to James teach this because this is just really good teaching. And to think that he, his own brother, he did not believe. Mm -hmm. You know, up until about the time, about a, up until his crucifixion, but you know, he did not believe. And then he, you mm -hmm. know, it's just yep. neat. But anyway, start with verse 12. 
Okay. So blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. All right. So verse 12 of blessed people. We don't usually equate suffering with being blessed, but this is the adjective James uses to describe those who remain firm in their faith and confident in God amid their trials. And then the promise of God. While this verse has much to say about our response to suffering, the main focus is on the promise of God. God has promised eternal life to those who love him, the crown of life. Remaining steadfast. The call to steadfastness is a call to faith and trust in God. While this may seem to imply a works-based salvation, we know from Scripture that our love for God and our enduring faith are both gifts from Him given by His grace. Yeah, will you go ahead and um, continue with verses 13 through 15 as well? Sure, sure. So verse 13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. So let's examine that just a little bit in more detail. Let no one say. James understands human nature, and he knows that when the pressure is on, we will be tempted to sin. Amid that temptation, we may be inclined to point the finger at God and to accuse him of being the source of our temptation. But James wants us to understand God rightly, and he warns us against accusing God of being a tempter. Let's talk about the character of God. God is holy, verse 13. In order to prove his point, James appeals to the holiness of God. Because God is holy and cannot sin, he cannot be tempted, and he will not tempt anyone to sin. All right, and the actual source of the temptations, our own desires in verse 14. In verse 14, James explains that our temptation to sin does not come from outside of us. Temptation is not an outside force, but an inner battle. The source of our temptations is the evil desires of our own hearts. And you can find that in Mark 7, verses 14 and 15, and also in verses 21 and 23. I'm sorry, through 23. Romans 7, verses 18 through 25, and also in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. You know, and one of the things that I think of is like what it says, the source of our temptation is the evil desires of our own hearts. Mm -hmm. um, think about like, for instance, let's say... I don't know, you want a Alexis or a Telsa or something, and you go into the dealership and they tell you, you know, it's going to be $900 a month or something. Mm -hmm. And you can afford that $900 a month, but barely. Yep. You're not going to hardly have anything left over, but you've got to have that Telsa. You've got to mm -hmm. have it. And so you buy it, and then you put yourself in such a financial strain that stress becomes next, anxiety, worry, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's the way I see it. That's a temptation of our own heart. Did we need yeah. that Telsa or could we have gotten, you know, a Nissan Sentra, you know, or something, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and I, and I can be honest, I've done things like that before in the past where I would get something that was out of my safety mm -hmm. zone budget. And then I, stressed yep. and worried about paying for it and you know i got out of it but still it was it it was a couple of years of not of worrying that i shouldn't have had to do yeah you know yep anyway go ahead sorry all right so the next one is the results of giving in to evil desires sin and death in verse 15 james personifies evil saying temptations and desires come together to conceive their offspring is named sin Sin grows up and becomes a parent too. The name of its child is death. Mm -hmm. As surely as physical conception leads to birth, this kind of conception gives birth to death. Oh, I love wow. the way he explains that. Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, think, uh, think about it. I mean, again, what does stress and anxiety do? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. 
And it's been a proven fact too that stress can cause all kinds of health problems too. And that's once again, you've got doubt mm -hmm. and your faith in the Lord of the healing, mm -hmm. but you've kind of brought it on yourself as well. I'm not talking about cancer, but I'm talking about oh no, cancer like ulcers. Yeah, and no, cancer can be fed by stress. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Yeah, okay, definitely. Yeah, I but mean, you no, already no, got I, the you already got the genes, but you know, it's kind of think of like a like a you know a, a, like a gun. You know, mm -hmm. those bullets are your genes. Yep. And as long as they're sitting in that gun, they're not doing any damage. But mm -hmm. the minute you pull that trigger, there's your damage, and that's what happens. You know, you got maybe you have the cancer genes, but when you pull that trigger on those genes, they start growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in, in any other kind of, you know, mm -hmm. situation. I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> but I knew like people get ulcers and mm -hmm. heart pass attacks. Out, like, attacks over stress and mm -hmm. uh, it can do all kinds of damage to your body. So it's like, yeah. that's an example of putting God first and mm -hmm. alleviating that stress, you know? Yeah. Don't let the evil temptations get you in a position mm -hmm. that you are, are going to get to that point because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and sin will lead to death. It's interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go through, let's let's work on verses 16 through 18, and 18 is the last one. Um, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that right that we might be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay, let's see. So the character of God as the giver of good gifts. Now that's verses 16 through 17. That's what it's saying that it's um talking about is the character of God giving good give as the giver of good gifts. God is holy. Since he is holy, everything that comes from him is good and perfect. And that it even extends to our trials. Even our trials can be seen as good gifts that God allows in order to produce something greater in us. Yeah, there again. Yep. Yeah, I mean, here I am doing this, you know, and stage four cancer for nine years. And, you know, this is me doing this now and he's he's let you know he's it's turned into this and it could have turned into anger at god mm -hmm. and i have my days don't get me wrong i've had my days but most of 99 percent of the time now though i i'm just like mm -hmm. whatever but um i just put it in his hands um god does not give us anything that is intended to harm us or cause us to sin everything that comes from his hand it is intended to grow and strengthen us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a true father the unchanging yep. god in times that are certain and inconsistent we can find hope in recognizing god's unchanging and never wavering character and then god's greatest gift is our salvation and that's in the verse 18 as james bring, as james brings this section to a close he ends with the reminder of the greatest gift that god has given namely our salvation Mm -hmm. yeah that's cool our world is cursed by sin and struggles but god has promised to make all things new we are a kind of a first fruits as even now god is making us more and more into the image of his son mm -hmm. and that's incredible that. mm -hmm. all right and then we um we are living in an unprecedented time and now more than ever we must strive to think rightly about god and his dealing with us Regardless of what we face, we can be confident in what God has promised and that he remains the giver of good gifts. We can also be sure that any temptation for sin is not from him, but from our own hearts. Thankfully, we know that in Christ, we can have victory over the sinful desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was nice. wonderful. Nice. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, the... I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's interesting how, you know, going with a temptation, if you, you know, if you go, you know, if you fulfill that temptation or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. right, you know, it doesn't have to just be purchasing a car, it can be anything, you know, how much that can turn into mm -hmm. sin, 
you know? Well, Bobby, I, I won't go into a lot of detail, but you know, I've had some issues and trials and, and things that have went on in my life. And, you know, the closer you get to the Lord, you look back on that and you think, my faith grew so much stronger through that because God always showed up and showed out, mm -hmm. you know, and he does. But when you're going through it, it's like sometimes you say, where are you? You know, because uh, things are just falling down in on you. And and as I went through that and with time, you find yourself you're not stressing as much because, you know, God's got you. Mm -hmm. And so to anybody watching this, if you're feeling that way, pray and ask God to just cover you with peace because he does have you you're his child and he loves you mm -hmm. um when we allow the stress to take over we're kind of giving satan control mm -hmm. instead of giving it to god and it, just kind of keep that in mind i mean mm -hmm. i thank him for those trials and tribulations because had i not went through that i don't think my faith would be as strong as it is now right. you know I don't know about you, but sometimes I look back and I'm like, Lord, how did I get through that? Oh, no. Uh, I you know, know. And, I, and of course, because I look at it now and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I could get through that again. What I went through, <laughs> you know, A, B and C. But, you know, I got through it, but I'd get through it again if I had to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, and sometimes, you know, we just and there's where the patience comes into play. Mm hmm patience on his timing because when we pray we want it to be like in the book of Daniel when Daniel was praying and Gabriel showed up right away like boom that's what mm -hmm. we want but sometimes it might take a little longer because he sees things he knows God knows why he's delaying that so mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so we just have to to deal with it so you got anything else you want to say I just want to say I'm really enjoying this. I'm looking forward to the future videos we're going to do on it because it's a wonderful study. Yeah. And um, it just makes you, it's, it's a time to reflect. Look back on all the times Jesus did step in. You know, you might not even that he's going to do it again. And he will, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's also good to look to the future and what we're learning too because we know things are going to progressively you know, get kind of crazy in our world. And we know that it's going to get a lot worse than what we're seeing now. So we probably are going to have like some trials and tribulations mm -hmm. coming up before Jesus takes us home. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got us and we know that we know we're about to go home and spend eternity with him. So keep that in mind. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's we are hard. about to go through even more than what we've been mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Yep. I was praying we weren't going to have to, but that's okay. He has a reason why we are going through, have to go through it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying we're going to go through, you know, the bowls and all that. I'm just saying, no. you know, if, you know, if indeed we have um, a, a rapture date next year, then mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we're going to have... see things kind of get, uh, you know, get progressively worse as we get close to the rapture, but God's got us. I mean, don't even stress when you're going through that. God will take care of us, you know, in anything. He always does. Oh, all right. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate it. <laughs> I did want to mention that we actually used a study from South, I'm sorry, from Southern <laughs> Hills Light to help with today's study. And we want to thank them for that. Um, so anything else? Um, if y'all want to leave comment, share. We appreciate <laughs> it. Y'all have a good one. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And Maranatha. Maranatha. <laughs>